you probably knew that all electrons orbit around the nucleus. But did you know that all electrons also spin on their axis? And so do all elementary particles? All elementary particles have an intrinsic spin, which is kind of like how all planets rotate on an axis. The spin is one of the three fundamental properties of an elementary particle, the other two being mass and charge, as every single elementary particle has a spin. As you probably know, there can be tons of variations in how something can spin. For example, the Earth can spin counterclockwise at roughly 23 degrees once every 24 hours, while Venus can spin clockwise at around 3 degrees once every 243 days. However, since elementary particles literally cannot be split any further, they are effectively zero-dimensional. So, we cannot know the tilt nor the speed that an elementary particle spins. We don't even know if they spin clockwise or counterclockwise. In fact, we don't even know if the particles are spinning in the classical sense, because if they did physically spin, then they would have to spin faster than the speed of light to account for the spin properties. The spin is more like a fundamental property of the universe, and there aren't really any metaphors we can make to compare spins to a macroscopic world. Anyways, for now, all we know is that elementary particles can either have a positive spin, a negative spin, or a zero spin. The spin measures a particle's intrinsic angular momentum in units of the reduced Planck's constant. So, a particle with a spin of 1 will have an intrinsic angular momentum of 1 times the reduced Planck's constant. There is also a special notation for spins that consist of whole numbers and half numbers. These correspond to the two major types of elementary particles. Fermions, the carriers of mass, and bosons, the carriers of energy. Fermions, like quarks and electrons, have a half number spin, while bosons, like gluons and photons, have a whole number spin. Why is this? Since fermions make up matter, they physically take up space, while bosons, the carriers of energy, can pile into each other. Thus, no two fermions can be in the same place at the same time. For example, no two electrons orbiting a nucleus can have the same orbital size, shape, orientation, or spin. But how does this relate to the fact that fermions can only be half integers? Well, that is because fermions cannot have zero spin, since zero is not a half integer. If a fermion were to have zero spin, then there would not be enough information describing the particle to ensure that its information is completely unique. Meanwhile, the whole number spins of bosons allows them to share the same states as other bosons, according to the Pauli exclusion principle. And how do we know that particles have spins? Well, the spin was discovered by Otto Stern and Walter Gerlach in 1922. They were shooting silver atoms through a varied magnetic field, or a magnetic field with changing strengths throughout the direction across space. What should have happened was that the electrons would go through the field in a straight line, as the silver atoms had equal protons and electrons, cancelling out any electric charges. However, the atoms instead split into two distinct groups, one on top and one on the bottom. The two groups represented the two spin directions that the fermions and the atoms had, positive one-half and negative one-half. In addition to just having spins of negative, positive, or zero, there are also two special particles with different spins, the graviton with a spin of two and the gravitino with a spin of three-halves. These particles are hypothetical and are believed to be responsible for gravity and dark matter. Anyways, hopefully this video was helpful. See you next week and bye.